what's going on? If you're new here, my name's Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. In today's video, we are taking a look at something I've wanted to build for quite some time. I'm talking about my 223 eight inch AR pistol backpack gun. Now, as always, I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. A lot of this build was from parts that I had laying around the house, in addition to components purchased from our good buddies over at Ventura Munitions here in Las Vegas. If you're a Vegas local, I definitely recommend checking out their shop as they have a great selection of guns, gear, and ammunition. They are very reasonable when it comes to pricing and they're good friends and supporters of our channel. Like I said, most of the parts for this build did come from Venturi Munitions. However, the other key components came from our good buddies over at Guys the Automatics, uh, such as the rail and trigger. More on that in a few. Okay, so before we get into the build specs, I first want to go over the why for this build as it's been a common question among our audience and on Instagram. Well, first reason is this. It's America and I can't. The second is because I wanted a Foldy Boy build that I could fit in my backpack, uh, my Vertex Gamut 2.0 specifically, while suppressed, and I wanted it to be a 223-556 gun. Now I know you're watching this and thinking, you should have gone with 300 blackout. Up to that I say, I already have three different 300 blackout builds, and they're great, but 223 isn't $1.60 around right now, it's more readily available, and for what I would be using it for, it still gets the job done. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the build. Um, I started out with an Aero Precision M4E1 lower receiver. In my opinion, if you're going to go the forged receiver route, you can't really beat theirs in regards to aesthetics. It has the nice integrated trigger guard and clean lines all around. I paired that with their upper receiver to match and use their upper and lower parts kits to complete these receivers. I then put in the Geisley SSA government model trigger, which is a crisp two-stage trigger with a wider face, making it easy to press off rounds in quick succession. I then used a Lantac Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group rated for full auto and nitride coated black, which creates a hard and smooth finish for better cycling. I also installed a Radian 45 degree ambi safety selector because it's easy to use and has become my favorite safety selector. Moving to the rear of the gun, I added the Aero Precision Standard Buffer Kit. However, I put in an H3 buffer in order to slow the gun down and smooth out that recoil, something we all definitely notice while out on the range. Attaching that to the lower receiver is a Law Tactical Gen 3 folder. This is an essential piece to all the Foldy Boy builds out there. I of course used an SBA3 pistol brace from SB Tactical with a Lunar Concept split fix and the new Stiffy device from Factor to ensure my brace doesn't get deformed during transport. Now, going back to the upper receiver, I used an EOTech EXPS2 that I had laying around. The reason I went with this model is one, I had it laying around from a previous build, so I didn't have to go out and buy a new optic, but also because I wanted something a little higher than absolute co-witness. I typically run tall risers on my guns, but with the purpose of having this stowed in a backpack, a taller riser could potentially cause snagging issues. So I figured a lower one-third height would be a happy medium. Now, one thing I'm not fond of with EOTech is the auto off feature. So I figured why not throw on a set of ScalarWorks Peak Iron Sights. I've had a couple of these sets laying around the house for a few years now and they work and look great. So now if a situation were to arise where I deployed this gun and forgot to turn off the optic, I could just use the irons that are already up and take the shot. And since I'm running the EOTech at a lower one third height, I can still use the optic with very minimal field of view obstruction from the irons. While we're back here at the rear sight, let's talk about the BCM ambidextrous charging handle. I'm a fan of ambi platforms and the extended levers on the BCM gunfighter charging handle work really well. Now continuing forward, we have the Geisley Mark 13 seven inch rail. I'm sure we can all agree that Geisley rails are pretty awesome. The function and aesthetics of their rails have always been a favorite in the industry for years. Housed inside that rail is a Ballistic Advantage 8 inch 556 barrel with a one and seven twist. And I have the Geisley low profile super gas block with the pistol length gas tube attached to that. Now on the outside of the rail, we have a lot going on. The first thing I'll talk about is the Arasaka Pictani finger stop. This serves nicely as a quick reference point when acquiring your support hand grip. 
Next up is the HRF Concepts ramp housing with a mod light mod button installed inside of it. This creates another reference point for your thumb and makes it easy to manipulate the weapon light when needed. Speaking of weapon lights, let's talk about that next. I decided to go with a ModLite PLH V2 in conjunction with an Arasaka 18350 body mounted 45 degrees offset. This keeps everything clean and in line to prevent any snagging. I also think that the PLH V2 is perfect for the setup as it has a good mix of flood and throw for both indoor and outdoor environments. Now remember when I talked about liking ambidextrous controls? In order for me to be able to run this setup left-handed, and still actuate my light, I decided to go with the Surefire DS07 tail cap. It allows for pressure pads to be plugged in as well as a momentary and constant on feature button on the rear. Using this tail cap allows me to acquire the same grip as a lefty and run the gun and light with ease. Now pushing towards the front end of the gun, we have the Surefire close tie and war comp that allows for the SOCOM mini suppressor to click on with ease as well. The last few components are the Lunar Concepts Contour Padded Sling, which is easily one of my favorites on the market. This sling is super comfy and allows the gun to hang nicely. This is connected to the SBA3 and then to a Magpul RSA QD adapter. You might be wondering why I have it mounted this way instead of directly into the Geisley Mark 13 rail since it has integrated QD points. Well, with the short length of this rail, the QD tends to get in the way of me acquiring a good grip along the forend. It actually goes right in the palm of my hand, so this was an easy fix using the Magpul adapter. Lastly, we have two really cool pieces of the puzzle. That would be the Reptilia CQG grip and the 20 round Magpul PMAG with Terran Tactical 5 round base plate. Now, I've mentioned a few times in this video that I wanted to prevent snagging while deploying from a bag. I have found with my experience, a normal size grip and standard 30 round magazine tend to get caught up when pulling from a bag. Using this Reptilia grip allows for me to get a full grip on the gun while keeping the overall height of the gun compact. In addition to that, you'll notice how the 20 round magazine is pretty much in line with the grip. This also prevents snagging and I'm not giving up that much as I'm now running 25 rounds instead of the 28 that I would be running in my 30 round magazine. Yeah, I'm one of those guys who only puts 28 rounds in my 30 round magazine. With the 20 rounders, there's still a little bit of play when fully loaded, unlike my 30 rounders when they're full. Okay, with the entire spec sheet out of the way, let's see how this Foldy Boy did on the range. So before we get into this, I have to be honest with you guys, uh, I'm not a fan of building ARs. Um, I like the end result, but I don't like the process of getting there. I lose screws, springs go flying, and detents disappear into the abyss. Um, I will say that once this thing was finally built, I did want to shoot it right away though. Um, I couldn't wait for our range session, so I actually took it over to see Mike at Venture Munitions, where they have a bullet trap set up for testing. Uh, Mike was a little hesitant to shoot it first, so I went first. Here's that footage now. Test fire three. Test fire. Test fire two. Test fire four. As you saw there, the function test went great. Um, so off the range we went. Paul and I headed out to one of our shooting spots last night. One of the really cool things about living here in Las Vegas is that I can drive 20 minutes away from my house, bring a couple of our battery powered studio lights and have a cool nighttime rain session instead of shooting when it's 100 plus degrees outside during the day. Um, I got this thing zeroed real quick at 50 yards and then we got to shooting. Uh, Paul actually had not shot this setup before so I decided to get his first rounds on camera. All right, I have shot this thing already, but Paul has not, so I want to get his first uh, first reaction to it of uh, this eight inch little foldy boy. Go for it, Paul. What you think? Uh, it is a lot less gassier than I thought it would be, and the recoil impulse is a lot softer than I thought it was gonna be. Um, do we find the magic combination of all the right parts? I think you did, man. I think the EBCG is really taming the gas that's coming out of the ejection port. And even and with that this heavy buffer dog, that too, definitely taming it up. And the K can is surprisingly doing well, right? For sure. All right. 
We ran about 200 rounds with the gun, and I'm happy to say that we didn't have a single malfunction. Um, I mainly wanted to get out on the range and practice deploying this from my new Vertex Gambit 2.0 backpack. Uh, I know a lot of us out there have these cool Gray Man style bags, but how many of us actually go out and practice with them? We decided to run this drill a few times, um, each with different camera angles so that you at home could get a feel for everything we have going on with this setup. How compact it is, how easy deployment is, and what the sound suppression and gas mitigation look like. Something I want to point out here, um, I thought this gun was going to be super gassy. Uh, if you're not familiar with shooting suppressed guns, depending on the setup, you can get a lot of gas back in your face, uh, especially with short barreled setups. It feels a lot like cutting an onion with your eyes right over it. It sucks. Um, with this setup, we aren't getting any gas in the face, like not at all. It was just not present, it was great. While out on the range, I also wanted to run the gun in a few different configurations in regards to the muzzle end. Um, what I mean by that, I wanted to try it unsuppressed, just with a closed time war comp. I wanted to try it with my Surefire SOCOM RC2, which is a little longer of a suppressor. Um, I wanted to try it with the Surefire Warden Blast Diffuser. And I also wanted to see if the atomic ammunition, the 5.56-112 grain subsonic cycling rounds would cycle with the SOCOM Mini. So let's just say we were pleasantly surprised. All right, last up will be the Atomic Subs. I believe they're uh, 112 grain. I'm gonna fire off three of these because they're probably like a million dollars around right now. Go for it, Paul. Bro. It's stupid quiet, it's crazy. The recoil impulse is like nothing too. It's like shooting a 22. That's fun. All right, overall, I am stoked on this build, guys. Um, now, I know some of you out there, again, prefer 300 blackout, and to be honest, I do too in regards to suppression. But like I said, I have a lot of 5.56 laying around and I can still get more 5.56 cheaper than I can get 300 blackout for. Um, this setup is more than capable of getting the job done that I needed to do. And now that brings up the next point, what is the purpose for this gun? Uh, for me, it's traveling. It's something that I can fold up, keep in my bag, and hope it never needs to come out. But if I ever did find myself in a situation where an AR pistol would better serve me than my handgun, uh, then I would have that option available to me. Um, what's that saying? It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Kind of like a parachute, right? Good point. Okay, now some other things I want to discuss because I know that I'm going to get questions down in the comment section. 
The first is about running the Surefire SOCOM mini suppressor with a short barrel length like eight inches. I talked to Surefire directly who said it was fine to do so, but it just wouldn't be as quiet since this particular can is optimized for 14 and a half inch guns. I understand that and all, but you clearly saw and heard earlier in this video, the mini is definitely much more quiet than unsuppressed. I shot this inside of Ventura's warehouse and honestly, it was no louder to me than attending a loud concert. The purpose of this build was to get a backpack gun that I could just take out and deploy that already has a suppressor on it. Now you could run a longer gun like a 10 and a half inch unsuppressed in this bag and then attach the suppressor upon deployment. Um, or you could carry ear pro with you or you could just run the gun without either. Um, that's entirely up to you. I had the idea of this build in mind, so I built it, I tested it and now I'm happy with its performance. So I will use it as specified. One other thing I want to note uh, was that I did notice the Law Tactical folder coming a little loose on the range. Uh, I may have forgotten to Loctite that down, so make sure you do that if you're building something similar. Well guys, I think that just about covers everything on this build. I hope you all liked the video. If you did, please leave us a thumbs up down below. That does help out the channel. A uh, big thanks again to Ventura Munition and Geisley Automatics uh, for their support with this video and our channel. I appreciate everyone checking out the video. Uh, if you're new here, please consider subscribing as we post new videos every week. If you want to further support our content, you can check out that Patreon link down below. Our Patreon squad, our Patreon members, they get first access to new content, new gear, special discount codes, and contests and giveaways. They are a huge reason why we can keep making these videos for you guys all to check out. Thanks again for watching, guys, and as always, I will see you in the next one. All right, so I have shot this thing. Polywall has not. Paul, grip it and rip it. Oh, let's do that over because that's going to be terrible. <laughs> New stage trigger with a wider face, making it. Yeah, My nose is itching. House, bring a couple of battery power. Uh,